Chemistry lecture number 67, demonstration of Boyle's and Charles' law. According to Boyle's law, the volume of a gas depends on the pressure it's under. For example, a balloon will maintain its size as long as the gas pressure inside the balloon is the same as the atmospheric pressure outside the balloon. Now, if the atmospheric pressure outside the balloon decreases, the pressure inside the balloon will be greater, causing the balloon to expand. As the balloon expands, the pressure inside the balloon decreases until it matches the surrounding atmospheric pressure. When the pressure inside the balloon matches the outside pressure, the balloon stops expanding. Now we can put a balloon inside a container and remove some of the air from the container using a gadget called the food saver. When the balloon is surrounded by less air, there will be less atmospheric pressure and the balloon will expand. And if the air is allowed back into the container, the balloon will be surrounded by more air molecules, which increases the atmospheric pressure. The balloon will then decrease in size. Okay, so let's do this. We have a balloon in a container and we're going to use this food saver gadget to remove some of the air in here and then when the air gets sucked out the balloon will be surrounded by fewer air molecules the balloon will be under less air pressure and as a result um, the balloon will expand in size. So that's the essence of uh, Boyle's law. When a gas is under less pressure uh, its volume will increase. Okay here we go. Oops. Let's plug it in. Ugh. All right, now let's try it. Okay, that's not too bad. We remove the air and then the volume of the balloon increased so there was less air pressure around it. Now if I press this button, air will rush back into the container, the balloon will be surrounded with more air molecules, and therefore the balloon will be under greater air pressure, and that's going to cause the volume to decrease. Okay, that didn't work out too badly. Alright, let's try another one. Now the same phenomena occurs when you look at a bag of potato chips as you drive over the mountain range. At higher altitudes, the air is thinner, which reduces the atmospheric pressure. A bag of chips will expand as you go up the mountain. The bag will shrink as you go down the mountain. So I have a bag of potato chips inside a container and uh, what we'll do is we're going to remove the air from the chamber and the bag of chips will have fewer air molecules surrounding it. It will be under less air pressure. And when a gas is under less air pressure, um, its volume will increase. So this is just like the balloon one. Alright, so this is what happens when you drive over a mountain range. Okay, so the volume of the bag of chips increased because there's less air surrounding it. So this is the same thing hap what happens when you drive to the top of a mountain. The air is thinner at the top of a mountain. The bag of chips is under less air pressure and uh, that allows the gas inside the bag to expand its volume. So if I press this button, air will go back into the container and the bag will be surrounded by more air molecules. It will be under more air pressure and its volume will decrease. Okay, so bag got squashed a little bit. The volume of gas decreases when it's under more pressure. What else do we have here? Ah, marshmallows. Well, let's see here. Um, uh, marshmallows will also expand and shrink as uh, the atmospheric pressure changes. And this occurs because marshmallows are filled with tiny pockets of air. This demonstration doesn't always work. If you use stale marshmallows, it doesn't work too well. So let's hope this works. So we're going to remove the air. Yeah. 
Okay, so the size of the marshmallows increased because we removed the air surrounding the marshmallows. The marshmallows were under less air pressure, allowing the gas trapped inside the marshmallows to expand. And once again, if we allow air into the container, the marshmallow should shrink. Okay, a gas under higher pressure has a smaller volume. Okay, now, um, we can also use the food saver to demonstrate how atmospheric pressure influences boiling. And at higher altitudes, water boils more easily at lower temperatures since there's less atmospheric pressure pushing on the surface of the water. We don't have to boil water to show this influence. We can use soda water and watch the bubbles rise to the surface. And we can remove some of the air above the surface of the soda water, and this will reduce the air pressure above the liquid, which should cause more bubbles to rise to the surface. So what we're going to do is empty this container. Okay. And we're just going to take some soda water. That on like that. All right, so all right, yeah, we can see the bubbles in there, not too badly. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the air above the surface of the liquid, and if we do that, there'll be less air pressure on the surface of the liquid, and that will allow more bubbles to come to the surface, and it sort of shows why boiling is easier at higher altitudes. Okay, here we go. So it seems to me that the bubbles are coming up faster now. There's less air pressure above the surface, so the bubbles come up faster. If I push this button and allow air to come back in, uh, the bubbles uh, should have a little bit more difficulty coming in. Up. All right, here we go, letting the air in. And it looks like it almost stops the uh, bubbles from coming up. So there's more air in the container, which means there's more air pressure pushing on the surface, which makes it more difficult for the bubbles to come up. So that shows why when you go to the top of Mount Everest, water boiled more easily. There's less air pressure pushing on the surface, and the water boils at 97 degrees Celsius instead of 100 degrees Celsius. Now, <coughs> we've seen that atmospheric pressure influences uh, both boiling and the volume of a gas. Uh, the volume of a gas is also influenced by temperature. According to Charles' law, a gas will have a higher volume at a higher temperature. And I'm going to move the camera over, so I apologize if you get a little bit motion sick. And here we are. I'll adjust the camera just a little bit. Okay. And we're going to open this up. And what do we have on the inside? Ah, yes. That. One way to observe Charles' Law is with a uh, bar of ivory soap. Uh, unlike most other bars of soap, ivory soap has pockets of air trapped inside. If the air in the soap is heated, the volume will increase, causing the soap to expand. We can heat the soap by putting it in a microwave and heating it for a few minutes. Do not try this at home. Alright, so this is just a uh, regular bar of ivory soap. This only works with ivory soap. It doesn't work with other soaps. Ivory soap has the peculiar characteristic of having air trapped inside of it. Alright, so I'm going to cook this for two minutes and to keep us entertained while this is cooking I'm going to read you some really hilarious uh, chemistry jokes all right and then we're gonna open it up and see what happens to the uh, soap all right here we go all right so here's our first chemistry joke what do you call a tooth and a glass of water 
what do you call a tooth and a glass of water? A one molar solution! Ha ha ha! Yeah, <clears throat> anyway. Next joke. Why did the noble gas cry? Because all his friends are gone! <laughs> Get it? Argon? Argon is a noble gas. Yeah, I like it. All right. Why does hamburger have a lower energy than steak? Because it's in the ground state! <laughs> you see when electrons are in the ground state, you know, they're close to the nucleus, they have less energy. Okay, anyway. Um, why did the white furry bear dissolve in water? Because it was polar! <laughs> Get it? You see, polar substances can dissolve in water and polar bear. Yeah, Alright, anyway. What do dipoles say in passing? Have you got a moment? Yeah, get it? Dipole moment? All right, I'll let you look that one up yourself. Did you hear about the chemist who was reading a book about helium? He just couldn't put it down. Yeah, okay. All right, this is probably one of my favorites. Two atoms are walking down the street. One atom says to the other, hey, I think I lost an electron. The other atom says, are you sure? The atom replies, Yes, I'm positive! <laughs> See, when an atom loses an electron, it gains positive charge. Get it? Uh, okay, well, anyway. Um, last one. A neutron walks into a bar. He asks the bartender, how much for a beer? The bartender offers him a warm smile and says, for you, no charge! <laughs> Get it? Yeah, I guess you have to know the charges of the uh, subatomic particles. Okay, well, no more jokes. And we have ten more seconds till... Uh, the cooking is done. And remember, this is a demonstration of a Charles Law. At higher temperatures, uh, the volume of a gas increases, and we have gas, bubbles of gas trapped in, or bubbles of air trapped in a bar of ivory soap. Right, right, here we go. Ta da! Look at that. So, the reason the bar of soap expanded was because the pockets of air inside. Uh, expanded. Okay, this gradually just squashes down, but that's pretty neat. Okay, and it's a uh, it's solid. It's kind of warm. All right, I got one more demonstration for you. I'm going to move the camera. All right. Let's see, can you see this okay? Might have to lower this down a little bit. Back it up. Okay, like that. All right, so here we have a pan of water. The water has some food coloring added to it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the candle and then I'm gonna invert this and place this over the candle. Hold on a second. Okay, so, one other way to demonstrate Charles' Law is to place a candle in a pan of water, light the candle, then cover the candle with a glass container. So we'll do that, and then I'll explain what's going on. You're going to see something interesting happen. I hope this works. Sometimes this doesn't always work. Keep in mind when I invert this, there's going to be gas in here being heated, and then when the candle goes out, uh, it loses its heat. Here we go. Candle is still lit up. Let's see what's happening? Oh, yeah, that worked out really good. I liked it. All right, so let's see if we can explain what's happening. As the flame heats the air in the container, the gas will expand, and some of it will go into the water. When the flame goes out, the temperature of the air decreases. At lower temperature, the air exerts less pressure. When the air pressure inside the glass drops below the air pressure outside the glass, the outside air pressure will push the water into the glass. So there's air pushing on the surface here, and it pushed the water into the glass. And it was able to do that because the outside air pressure pushing on the surface was greater than the air pressure inside uh, the glass. 
Now the outside air pressure pushes on the surface of the water outside of the glass, which keeps the water level elevated on the inside of the glass. So that's why the water doesn't come spilling out. The air pressure is pushing on the surface and it's holding it up. If the outside air pressure goes up and down, the water level in the glass would also go up and down. And this is how a barometer works. The only difference is that a barometer uses liquid mercury instead of water. Well, I hope you found those demonstrations interesting. <laughs> okay. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 67, Demonstration of Boyle's and Charles Law.